Welcome back to the News at 10. We can now bring you some of the pictures sent in by eyewitness reporters all over the country. First is this one from Ikorodu in Lagos, where an electric pole crashed onto a building. Our eyewitness reporter says the pole has been left unattended to for almost two weeks. Our second picture is from Enugu on Isha Road, which uh, Eyewitness Reporter says uh, needs urgent attention and is pleading with the federal government to come and fix. Our third and final picture for tonight is this of an overloaded, overloaded vehicle. Eyewitness Reporter is urging the road safety agencies to stop this act. That's all we have for you for tonight, but please keep the pictures coming. Nigeria is ranked number seven in the world population and ranked number one in Africa. More than half the population of West Africa is in Nigeria. Yet the estimates are that only 40% of births are registered. Is population a strength for us or an albatross? Channel Television's in-house uh, Channel Television's data analyst uh, Babaji Dogusa will join us now to answer our questions. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Good evening. The next population census, of course, is planned for 2018. Recently, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Jacobo Dogara, suggested that it should be moved to 2019 because of the elections. He said this is to avoid manipulation of figures because of the elections and so on. So how easy would it be to manipulate such data? Uh, I would like to take it from a different perspective. Perhaps how easy is it for us to count? Mm -hmm. And our history seems to suggest that apart from counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 10, we have a counting problem. Now, let's consider three things. 1911, three years before our amalgamation, what was our population? 16 million. That was the figure. But again, that number was contested. So let's move and fast forward to our first census. After independence, 1962, the population was put at 45 million then. It was said that the southern Nigeria region had a higher population than the north. But what then happened? The 1962 results as well were cancelled. Again, fast forward to 1973, another population census. That was done to verify the 1963 population census that had put the population then to 55.6 million Nigerians. What had happened in 1973 as well? The population census figure, highly contested results, cancelled. So we've had a history of severe challenges when it comes to counting accuracy. But let's fast forward to what the Speaker of the House of Representatives has said. That the election should be, the, the census should be moved from 2018, potentially <clears throat> into 2020. But that is also just like pushing the problem forward. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. Even if we did put the new population census to 2020, Going by the UN standard, it then means that the next census will be 10 years after. That will be 2030. The challenge is, in 2031, there's also an election. So we move the census to 2020. We then find ourselves in a position where the next or subsequent census will be in 2030. However, there's going to be a general election in 2031. So does that solve the problem? No, it doesn't. Does that make the problem disappear. It doesn't even address the problem. No, it doesn't. So we need to fix the problems by moving into solutions. And I'll give you three simple solutions based on history that we can adopt. The first is to identify all the problems where potential data manipulation could occur. The second is now to create new procedures to manage the steps. Now the third is to ensure that we have an instant audit across everywhere we collect census data. If we do apply this three-step approach, that is easy to implement, our census figures will be more accurate. The chairman of the National Population Commission says we need at least 20, 222 billion naira to conduct another census. And uh, as you have mentioned, there have been controversies surrounding census in the past. Uh, there's been no credible census, uh, as we understand, since uh, 1863, not even the 2006 census. So can we justify the use for these funds? So let's listen to their narrative. They say out of the 222 billion naira, 94 billion now will be used for pre-census. They say 120 billion now will be used for the actual census, and an additional 8 billion will be used for post-census activities. But looking at the cost is just one way to look at it. 
looking at the benefits for instance how can we plan for the millions and millions of nigerians without knowing who they are where they are and what their problems are and that's one thing that the census is expected to to address to be able to clearly know where the problems are and one other advantage it will bring is clearly it allows us to plan for security for employment and for health but let's really even just talk about one of this health today we know that in nigeria in our country for every six thousand citizens we only have one doctor in the uk and the us for every six thousand citizens they've got two thousand doctors can we have a healthy economy without having a healthy population no we can't and the census an accurate census allows us to clearly identify the challenges and how we can create incentives to be able to get people into the right professions and to do the right things. So, well, planning, uh, this is all talk talking about the planning of the census itself, which will help us to plan, beg your pardon, plan for the future, even elections and so on. But are uh, the concerns we have about uh, politicization of the census, uh, manipulation of figures and so on, are they real? Are they real or can are they just being overestimated? Are we just being afraid for nothing? Yes, the consensus is real. Let's look at the mind of a politician. And here's the mind of a politician. This represents the country. If we leave the politician to do what he wants, he will simply try and ensure that he divides the population to suit his needs. The politician will try and ensure that the numbers are larger within his region. But just remember this, the size of the cake really doesn't matter. What really matters is how sweet the cake is. So today, Nigerians aren't really concerned about how big or how small the population is. What Nigerians really want is they want a sweet country. And to make that also easy, you perhaps also don't deserve, or you probably do deserve more than a big piece of cake. But again, the size isn't what you should be concerned about. Is the sweetness of the cake the sweetness of the country is what nigerians are asking for the challenge today for instance is why has our population risen this fast and that is because the average and the national standard is a woman gives birth to as much as five children compared to developed economies where that number is two to two to two to three children mm. the challenge and the narrative thus means that we've stuck and we've left our, our women to just be making babies we lose the ideas by just turning women to baby factories. We lose the ideas, and because we lose the ideas, we lose the opportunity for them to be productive. And because we lo lose the opportunities for them to be productive, we also lose the potential to earn good taxable income from them. So we see how population connects and how our high growth of population connects to how we've been able to underachieve in several sectors of the and economy. And also affects our quality of life. Thank you so much, Baba Gigi. I guess we'll have uh, some of that cake a little later. Surely, but also remember, <laughs> it's the sweetness of the cake that matters, not the size. Of course. Of course. Moving on to Adamawa State now in northeast Nigeria is renowned for its rich cultural heritage. This reflects in its history, dances, dress patterns, craftsmanship, music, which should make Adamawa a tourist dream destination, right? But the objective has not fulfilled its goal. No thanks to the Boko Haram insurgency, which destroyed historical sites and sent hundreds of people from their homes. This next report looks at the efforts being made to revive and export the culture of Adamawa State. Some of the relegated offerings of Adamawa State, a landscape that may never be given the true description it deserves, creativity that may never be properly harnessed, and a rhythm that has been drowned by the sound of insurgency. This melody has brought with it the loss of lives, destruction of property, and people displaced from their homes. But from these tough times comes the need to remember when the coming together of men to wrestle was for sport. Bachawa Kingdom and the Butter Kingdom. Yeah, wow. 
when hands molded culture. And sounds of hooves was tradition. This was a dream for Adamawa stage when it was cut from Dongola in 1991. Its proximity to Northern Cameroon was, among other reasons, meant to bolster an exchange in culture and trade. But all that is being threatened by the Boko Haram sect. However, the state government is making efforts to ensure that the story of Adamawa is not lost to violence. It is throwing its weight behind a plan to promote the state in the United States of America. Perhaps this might just be the needed tonic. So I have come to Adamawa State to solicit the state support and to show you that your daughter has achieved something, you know, to bring it here and solicit your support so that I can go and showcase Adamawa State in the USA. Anything you want us to do for you, we'll do it. <laughs> you want to go to your projecting the Adama figure outside there. And I think anytime we go to Lagos or Abuja, we'll feel very proud of you. To say that uh, our owner is now representing us somewhere. There is still a lot of work for the Adamawa state government to do with regards to revamping historical sites destroyed by insurgents and re-announcing itself as a cultural destination. And the authorities appear to be holding on to the popular saying, once there's a will, there's a way. In spite of the free education policy in the Kwara State Government, some parents' teachers' associations have been charging fees for students and pupils of primary and junior secondary schools. While some parents have described the school fees as illegal, which could lead to withdrawal of students, the state government welcomes the development as an agreement by parents and teachers. Kwara State, in north central part of the country, is one of the few states that introduced free education in primary and junior secondary schools and charged 200 naira per term. However, in recent times, there has been complaints from parents and wards over what they termed illegal charges and increase in fees by schools in compliance with directives from the state chapter of the Parents Teachers Association amounting to nearly 1,600 naira per term. This parent believes the astronomical increase leads to withdrawal of children as most parents could not afford the increase. We have quite a number of children on the street, hawking, selling, begging, than the number we do have in the school. Perhaps is a result of the purported increment in the school fees of the children. The State Commissioner for Education and Human Capital Development, Musa Yeketi, while emphasizing that education in the state is tuition free, however admitted the collection of certain levies by schools as agreed upon by both the teachers and parents to complement the efforts of the government in the provision of furniture and other needs of each school. Education in Kwara State still remains tuition free. However, PTA, PTA, Parent Teachers Associations, in their various schools, agree on certain levies to do one thing or the other. It is an agreement between the parents and the school. The state chairman of the Parents Teachers Association, Ibrahim Monie, said the need to ensure sound education informed the reason for the levies as government alone cannot provide all the needs of the pupils and students. Coming together to provide basic needs in schools, he believes will go a long way in enhancing education standard in the state. If you go around all the amenity, all the necessity things that can provide a sound education, is not provided. So if the parents are so joined together and decide in order to assist themselves, we are not assisting the government. The Commissioner of Education noted that politicians are behind the campaign against the levies, adding that the opposition wants to discredit the government and paint a non-performance in education sector. 
Still ahead on the news at 10, Arsenal beat Manchester City and Wembley to reach a third English FA Cup final in four seasons. That's coming up in sports news. Do join us again.